Hey everyone, welcome in. Thank you for joining me. My name is Marlene and I am with the Room to Bloom. So I just did a short and I wanted to continue on with the reading. So the first three cards that came out on that reading, I used the messages from the mermaid and I wanted to take a couple more and then go further with this reading. So the first card that came out um, is waiting. So you may feel like you are in a situation where you are waiting for something or for someone. And when we are on our spiritual journey, oftentimes it really can feel like that. And what we're also what we're being taught is flow, trust, faith. And so it, it is about learning patience um, and really just having faith that things are being worked out um, where you might not be able to visually see them, right? In other realms, okay? Things are being worked out in other realms. Water represents emotion. Part of the waiting might be simply for you to do your healing or for another person to do healing or for a, a location, a space, a company, whatever. Um, you might be... Um, you could be waiting for so many things, but when we let go and we let God, we give our um, impatience, right, to God and we say, you know, things are going to work out. What's meant for me will be for me and what isn't is because there is something that is better for me, um, that is be in more alignment with my higher self, right? The next one that came up is ask for help, okay? Okay. So if you are in any type of situation where you have hesitated to ask for help, it's okay to do that. That is a message that has been coming through steady for two weeks, okay? Here we have, um, you could be waiting on abundance to come in, um, but abundance is yours um, and it is here. It is simply aligning to that abundance. That means potentially shifting your frequency, right? Shifting your energy, your vibration. I'm going to um, keep shuffling. I had one in, um, reversed in the deck here. So we're going to take a couple more and see what else comes up. Here she has a treasure chest. It, I have to tell you something. Last night it was interesting. I happened to be watching The Crown on TV. There was a... I, I, I don't even know what I had in front of me. It was some kind of little magazine I just picked up somewhere. It said something about like the crown jewels. Then I realized that there was another thing right in front of me that spoke on the crown jewels. Yesterday I opened up some other magazine for art that was this page on all of these jewels, right? Um, and today I saw crown jewels again. So um, it could have something to do with abundance, with jewels, with treasure, right? Um, you know, from a spiritual basis, what are the crown jewels? That's something that I'm going to leave for you to fill in. Okay, the next one we have is the future. So you might be sitting in wait, wondering what's in your future, right? Here she looks into the this crystal ball, Um She's wondering about her future. There is a fish here that is swimming around her. Um, she is look, looking towards the future instead of towards the past. Just like in this card, she's looking out. She's not looking back. She's waiting for what what is coming her way, not hanging on so tightly to the past, right? Um, there is some type of contemplation at hand here. This came up the other day when I used this deck again. Um, so, so you might be thinking about your future and you're trying to make some decisions about that. And so if you're struggling to make those decisions, you might want to, um, get more information, right? So let's see if we can get a little bit more information on what it is being shown that you are waiting on. Uh, let's see. This is the um, Guardian Angel Message Tarot deck. Let's see what comes through. This is by Radley Valentine. What would you like to show us for the collective that would be helpful? Okay, Seven of Fire. Um, you've been waiting. 
This is where you're holding your boundaries, potentially from others, from situations, from circumstance, because you might be getting resistance, but you're, you're being challenged in some form or manner, but you're staying determined. You see how all these other wands are coming towards this person? And it's like you're holding your own, and that could be what this waiting is about. We're going to continue to go on and see what else comes up. Can you tell us about this asking for help? Okay, we have a king of waters. This is someone who is very emotional, who's in their emotions. They are a very compassionate person. They're understanding and they're trustworthy. It's interesting that I went like this because look at how that gentleman is standing there, right? Um, there may be a king of water energy in your presence or awareness and that may be the person that you are being guided to ask for help i have to point this out look at the crown in the tree as i was just speaking about that too right the king and he holds a golden chalice okay so let's see what else we have under abundance okay we have a justice fairness the law and carmen karma pardon me so it looks like there is justice that is coming in and through this justice there will be abundance that is coming in in a situation what would you like to tell us about the future here eight of air okay so the reason that this person is looking into the future because right now they're having some self-doubt some confusion and they feel the the swords are about being in your thoughts right we're thinking instead of feeling right so when we go with the flow of our emotions we move more into a state of feeling feeling things sensing things knowing things um so someone may be antsy to look into their future i really want to know about the future but the thing is is this person can walk right around these swords. They just have to get out of their head. Out of their head and into their heart. There is also a white feather on this person's um, jacket. I want to point that out. That is a white feather emblem, which speaks of angels and guides. Um, wearing a red jacket. So the red can represent... Um, like basic needs and such so might have some self-doubt or confusion about your like what you're doing next as far as that goes right um you know maybe you're moving maybe you're getting a new job right things like that are kind of of the earth with that red tone okay the next one we have under contemplation which is no surprise that this card comes up the seven of water which can often be about confusion but 444 is that number on this came up yesterday speaks about protection that there are many choices in front of you and you're over analyzing and procrastinating in a situation because you've been contemplating for quite some time okay let's see if we can take um get a little more information why is the seven of fire here this the seven of wands the challenging determination and resistance um because there is an end of a cycle and and this is the world so the world says okay a cycle has complete been completed you've accomplished this there's a celebration for completing this right so there could even be others that have been waiting on you which is kind of interesting right you've been holding your space um let's keep going a little bit further here can you tell us more about this king of water the chariot okay ask for help the chariot is indicative of someone who may be coming in quickly who may be moving quickly um it's also speaks about balance because there's usually a white and black horse on here um it speaks about willpower, victory, and recognition. So someone could be actually moving toward you. This is a um, faster moving energy as well. And this could be a king of water who is moving toward you in some form or manner. And it's okay to ask for help. 
Okay, what else do we have here? Under the abundance and the justice, we have the ace of fire. This speaks about truth that is coming in. Um, you know, I, I, I apologize. I was thinking this is the ace of swords. It's the ace of fire, which is the ace of wands, which speaks of creativity, new opportunity for abundance in creativity. Wands represent action and the element of fire. Okay. So through this creativity, it also helps bring in abundance, right? Okay. What else can you tell us about this eight of air under the future here? We have the lovers. Okay, so this, this gal is wanting to know what's going on in a situation with a loved one. And there's some self-doubt, confusion. Um, the lover speaks of relationships, emotions, and choices here. What choices are you making? Again, here's that contemplation card. So someone may have a lot of choices in that area, right? And they've been trying to figure out Who's their one, you know? Okay, the seven of water. Why is that here? Uh, ah, okay. Contemplation, seven of water, lots of choices over analyzing procrastination. Um, this is a card of walking away from a situation and all the cups, walking away from all those cups. So it's like advancement from that seven of water to the eight of water or the eight of cups. It's like, just letting it go and moving on to something else okay what do we have here um this is kind of interesting for the outcome here we have the three of earth which is the three of pentacles it speaks about community collaboration taking your talents getting recognized for the talents that you have isn't that lovely what uh, she's making there um being recognized for the talents that you have and collaborating with others to do so. At the bottom of the deck, we have the wheel, which is like the wheel of fortune. So um, it speaks of luck, progress, and change in your favor. And so you may not have been aware of this. It's like a subconscious thing. Underneath that, we have the moon, right? Illusion, intuition, um, revelation. So there, you know, maybe things are in your... Uh, favor right we have that abundance card so things are moving in your favor but maybe you just haven't been aware of it but it looks like there's a celebration at hand community and friendship here for you as well a celebration of some type um we also have a king of earth he came up the other day again this is like the king of pentacles someone who's prosperous generous and successful this person may want to change your fortune, right? Um, reveal themselves and have some type of a celebration because they see you as a wise counselor, okay? All right, so I'm gonna let that be, although I'm not going to totally wrap that up. I'm gonna see if we can get, um, actually, I'm gonna take a message this is going to be a little bit kind of out of the wheelhouse, but I'm going to take it. It's called Deals, Days of Healing and Days of Joy. It's meditations for adult children. I just want to see if Spirit can show us a message that might help with this reading. What would you like to show us? August 9th. Others treat us the way we invite them to treat us. Coping with stress is a lot more difficult than preventing it in the first place. If we think prevention, we can avoid a surprising number of stressful situations by thinking ahead and sidestepping. That word sidestepping is like shifting, right? Think of driving a, a stick shift or a car. You have to move it over and then up if it's depending upon the vehicle, right? We don't have to have lunch with difficult or complaining coworkers, for example. We can take a walk at lunchtime or catch up on some reading. So being aware of who are we spending time around. Are they um, draining our energy or are they pouring into us, right? Do they inspire us or pull us down? And it's not about judgment, but it is about recognition. And again, here was this gentleman, right? Simply holding his boundaries, um, so he could be feeling all of that. And if you're sensitive, you will feel that. It's 
says we can limit, limit our availability to other family members by telling them that we are off duty after 8 p.m. If we stick to it, the others will learn not to ask for late night help with homework or for a shirt to be ironed. We deserve quiet time to build up our reserves and to fend off stress. Giving all of our time away is foolish, not virtuous. We can only expect others to respect our limitations if we are clear about our boundaries. To stay healthy, we need to avoid or at least limit involvement in all unnecessary aggravations. It says, I will demand the time I need each day for myself. And um, that's so important. I, want, I, I really am feeling like I want to read this next one as well. So really just holding those boundaries for what you need to recharge yourself on a, you know, each day. And you might need to, to do that multiple times a day. You might do it in the morning. You'd step out for lunch, right? Take some time in the evening to recenter yourself, recharge yourself. The next one is August 8th. So 8-8, eight, eight, that's the Lion's Gate portal. It says the healthier we become, the less willing we become to tolerate disaster in our relationships. It says, are there any good men out there? Why can't I find a good old fashioned woman? Maybe they don't make them anymore. How often we hear sentiments like this, this from lonely people who try as they might always come out losers in their relationship. But there is no accident or mystery or bad luck involved when we consistently fail to make solid relationships. We find partners who fit and go after them. If the people who fit us aren't good possibilities, the pattern of misfitting must have to do more with us than it does with them. But when we come to believe that we deserve to be respected, that we do not tolerate abuse, and that a loving relationship can be part of life, that's when it all becomes possible. We are as good as anybody else. We deserve respect and happiness. When we believe these truths, our luck in relationships will change. Today, I will not look to anybody else for what I can only find in myself. So that's that's kind of some of the challenging work or what one might consider shadow work. Shadow work, we go back into our past and we might peel our past apart a bit going, where did where did I start to build up walls? Where did I have hurts? What what triggers me still today? And then we, you know, we kind of start digging in and doing that work a little bit. But um, the, the more we visit something, the easier it is to start to shed it or to let it go, right? But then we might think we've healed something and we can have a couple of different things happen. Say maybe years go by and a particular smell, you know, just kind of throws you off, right? A song on the radio, a certain car, a location, a restaurant, right? Um, it can throw you off. So, so what it does is when it throws you off is it's just like your body's alert system saying a little bit more healing here. It, it was still stuck down in there like a little, like a little gas bubble. And we're going to bring that up now because now you're ready to process it. Now you're ready to release it, right? Now you're ready to look at it and really, really look at it because that was the furthest down, right? Um, and it's like when you can tell your story without crying, you know that you have really healed from it, right? Or if you can also tell your story without anger and rage and frustration and pain and, you know, all this other stuff, right? Because what you do is you end up telling it more from an observer's standpoint, almost like when a book is written, right? There will be Sometimes the main character is the one who is, um, it's like they're, it's from their perspective, but sometimes it is like an observer position where someone is talking about each character. It's like God watching over our life, right? And so speaks about each character. So it's a little bit um, interesting when you do that. So I want to see if we can grab one more one more deck 
Um, let's see. I, I like these cards. I didn't want to have them all out. Okay. So this deck is called the Divine Beloved Oracle Cards. Let's see what comes up here. This is by, these are by Tasha Silver. What would you like to show us that would be helpful for the collective here in regards to this message that has come forth through so far here? We have longing. Very interesting because when I first got it out of the deck, it was the deck on the, the card on the bottom, and I have not seen this card yet. So it says, I offer my deepest desires. Change me, divine beloved, into one who offers you my deepest longings, trusting you know exactly how to handle them. Let me know my wholeness and freedom most of all. So when I was saying this, give it to God, right? Ask for help. Ask for help. If you have a hard time asking a human for help, you can ask your angels and guides, but you can start out asking your angels and guides to bring helpful people into your life, right? Helpful those who are having their human experience, right? So here, this woman is crying, by the way, and this gentleman is comforting her. Okay, what else do we have here? And where it says longing, that falls under waiting, okay? Divine assistance, I am open to receive. What are you looking to receive? Remember, ask for help is here. It says, change me, divine beloved, into one who is willing to receive all the right help. Let me feel deserving of divine assistance in every way. Open me to receive. And here she has white doves on her skirt. If you hold it up close, it looks like her top is that of sunshine. So it looks like the sky and the sun. Such a cute, cute idea for an outfit. But again, it's just simply when we have been that person who hasn't who's always been the giver, the doer, the helper, right? It can be a challenge to learn how to be the receiver. Um, and at first it can feel humbling, right? But there is something about it that feels authentically right, that feels okay, that feels more in flow. Um, it's like energetic exchange, right? Okay, what else can you tell us here? Okay, worthy. I know my own worth. Now remember, this comes under abundance, justice, and new opportunity in creativity. Change me, divine beloved, into one who knows my own worth. Let me feel entitled to speak my truth with love. May I know that I deserve to be surrounded by those who value me, right? So that can be a tough too to, you know, if you are noticing that you are in certain situations, but you do not feel valued, right? Again, asking for divine assistance to have others sent into your life, your soul tribe, right? So that you do feel valued and that you do feel as if you have a place, a place that you have been longing for. Maybe you've been waiting. Oh, I have goosebumps. Maybe you've been waiting to find that right place. And in the meantime, you've been just holding boundaries, right? Holding boundaries, knowing that it is here for you. Okay, what else can you tell us? Source. Okay, this falls under the future, the eight of air, and, and um, the lover's Change me, divine beloved, into one who knows that you are my source. Fill me with confidence and faith so I never have to beg, just gratefully receive. So here we have another message of being a receiver, right? Um, today I purchased a book and it was about um, gratitude, right? And so when we receive, it is also that remembering that uh, being grateful in advance, right? Not even always just after, but being grateful that, and because you know and you trust and you have faith that God is working miracles, that your angels and guides are working to help bring these things into alignment that resonate with you on a very 
deep and profound level. The next one that we have is authenticity. I can be my true self. Now remember this falls under the contemplation, the seven of water where it feels like there's many choices, there's protection, um, choices over analyzing, procrastination, and then walking away from something so that you can be your most authentic self. It says, change me, divine beloved, into one who has the courage to be my true self. Allow me to honor my sexuality, desires, and needs as sacred expressions of your divine love. Um, so that's what's on this card here, authenticity. So what is authentic? To you, okay. Um, I I I don't know what drew me to shuffle and look on the bottom of the deck is boundaries once again, and it says, "Change me, divine beloved, into one who easily sets boundaries wherever needed." I feel entitled. Pardon me. May I feel entitled to say no to any situation that feels bad or wrong? Fill me, divine. With divine confidence, speak through me, okay? I am entitled to say no. And this is these can be part of the lessons and challenges that we have when someone or some situation is really pushing you. Do you do, do things or have you done things that were not in accord with you? They caused you discord and you did them and then you just felt bad and what you know whatever you carry all this other stuff with it because that wasn't in alignment with who you naturally were um at your soul level and so these are you know when people talk about um the devil like it's it's this is within us we all have light we all have dark right and so it is like facing our own shadow side understanding that you know, we aren't perfect. We're here for soul lessons and we've all made choices that, you know, given given the chance again, we'd choose again and these lessons will come around until we have learned the lesson, right? Until we have stepped into what feels like soul alignment for us. It's a soul yes. It's not a, I said yes and then I feel in total discord about it. We start to learn how to, hold our own because what happened we set boundaries we started to know thyself right we really started to know thyself and that's really beautiful to do that so i hope this message was helpful for you i want to say thank you for joining me i hope you have an amazing day take care